feel it from all my display views. Thanks for the warm welcome back, friends. We're back in New York City. That's right, we were in sunny Los Angeles all last week, but we're back. We got our pre-show, which means I have a trivia answer for all of you. And if you don't know, we're doing a Valentine's Day themed game tonight, which is gonna be really, really fun. I got my heart themed shirt on. We got 500 bucks to give away. And all of the questions are gonna have something to do with love or Valentine's Day. So let's get you started with a very real question eight. This is for no points, no money. I'm gonna put up the question and I wanna see how you do. And then I'll reveal the correct answer. Let's do it. Let's get those fingers in motion. All of the following chemicals are released when someone is falling in love, except dopamine, nor epinephrine, BDNF. Which one is not released when someone is falling in love? Maybe that's the easier way to ask. Which one's not released when someone's falling in love? 36% right now are saying dopamine, 18% are saying norepinephrine, 45% are saying BDNF. And 45% of you would be correct, friends, because BDNF is released during exercise. But funny enough, a lot of the stuff that's released during exercise is also released when you're falling in love. Lots of stuff is released when you're falling in love. It makes you nervous, adrenaline, it makes you feel good, just like exercise. But BDNF is the answer that we're looking for tonight in question eight. So make sure you mark that down, file it away in your memory so that you can be one step closer to winning that $500. Are you ready for a Valentine's Day game? Did you study all of the love, all of the heart questions? There's actually a lot of trivia that you could ask about Valentine's Day. There's another fun fact for you. We got lots and lots of all kinds of questions for all of you, but all you need to know right now is the answer is BDNF. Let's move into some original content. I have missed this. I've missed showing off all of the amazing stuff that you put on display, because that's how you earn money without trivia. That's the main thing. That's the main way to earn money here on display. So let's show off some of that content. Let's get our first post up, the first show back in New York. We've got this one from Elgin. It's a money tree. Caption says, my money tree growing new leaves. Does anybody else have a money tree? And I don't really think you need one, you know, because if you're posting on display, you don't need a money tree. You're, you're earning money here on display. But I love the idea of this. I think it's really sweet. Let me know. Does anybody else have a money tree out there? We've got this from Patrice. Squad goals for real. I love posts of family, friends, all kinds of people hanging out. Who were you chilling with yesterday for the Super Bowl? Did you go out? Did you have a party at your place? Let me know in the chat. What'd you spend the day doing? Did you have your squad together? This one's from Ionella. Is this Hogwarts or is this Paris? I want you to weigh in. I don't have a poll for you, but weigh in in the chat right now. Is this Hogwarts or is this Paris? Let me know. All right, I'll tell you, it's Paris. It's definitely Paris. And reminder, get those travel up. If you haven't traveled recently, throw up a throwback. We love a throwback. Thursday's coming up. What a great hashtag, throwback Thursday. Get those travel pics up or join the community, world traveling. Okay, next post. This one's from Snoop Dogg and a big congrats to him because this is his latest release, Back on Death Row, first NFT album. How cool is that? A whole NFT album? I love that, congrats to Snoop. Display Fest all the way he performed. He's got a profile here on display. Make sure you're checking that out. Go with some, uh, go say congratulations to Snoop. How cool is that? Daily Kaylee, I love how that rhymes and I love that you're celebrating Valentine's Day, day of love. Look at this cute little photo shoot. I wonder if he gave her the balloons, but I love the EXO. I love the pink balloons, super, super cute. How are you celebrating? Let me know in the chat, I wanna know. All right, this one's from Michael. Took a nice stroll through the woods this morning. Gorgeous, the way the sun is streaming through those trees and a reminder that you can simply go outside and capture something like this. We want to see what it looks like. We're all at different locations around the world. It's always easy to step outside, snap a photo, show us your weather, show us your scenery. Thanks, Michael. This is gorgeous. All right, then we've got this one from Kevin Hinkle. Oh my goodness. This is Valentine. That is the name of this little itty bitty thing of joy, this little puppy, whoopee. I can't help but talk in a baby voice when I'm talking about baby animals. How cute. So they, they just got this puppy today and they named him Valentine. I love it. All right, last post. This one's from Matcha Sam, a family affair in Hong Kong. 
I love the content from around the world. I already told you this, but make sure you're posting wherever you're at. We, it is unique to someone, even if it doesn't feel you know, fresh to you, it feels stale to you, you're like, I got nothing. I promise you, your viewpoint is different from someone else's. So get those photos up, celebrate. If you haven't posted today, put something up for Valentine's Day. Just say, I love this. I don't care if it's food. I love food. I don't care if it's ec I, whatever you love, snap a photo, put it up, say, this is what I love. Maybe I'll show off some of my favorites tomorrow in a little belated Valentine's Day thing. But speaking of Valentine's Day, we have a whole Valentine's Day game for you coming up in five minutes for $500. I'll see you there. Oh, yeah. Hello, Display Bees, and welcome to an all new episode of Trivia Live on Display. I'm sure you've noticed that every day here on display is special, but today, today is something to write home about. That's right, get your Valentine's Day cards out and your gel pens ready to do some signing because today is all about spreading the love. Roses are red, violets are blue. We made this all new round of trivia just for you. That's right, it's Valentine's Day and I am the luckiest girl in the world because Look at all these Valentines that I have right here in the chat. I've got Smolik, I've got Patrizia, I've got Ronnie, I've got Ash Zero and Bubble Bass and Hanto. Oh, Mr. Ambiguous, what a lucky girl I am. But then again, I mean, we treat you all every weekday here on display. So if you've tuned in before, you already know the 10 questions that lead to love. But if you're just tuning in for the first time, let me go over some rules. You'll have 10 seconds to answer each of the following 10 questions. They'll get harder as we go, but love endures all things. Make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and that you're holding your phone vertically. Oh, and make sure to choose your answers very carefully because once you tap, there's no going back. Nope, trivia is just like love in that there are no do-overs, but sending over some flowers and chocolates probably won't hurt. Now, they say all is fair in love and war, but I want things to be nice and fair and trivia too. So let's all get on equal playing field with a practice question for no points at all. Tell me, would you rather kiss and tell, shut up and dance, or bow your head and pray? Which would you rather? This is to get those fingers and fight in shape. Shut up and dance with me will be my vote. And let's keep it moving. You feeling warmed up and ready? You feeling the love, the blood, flowing through your veins. Yes. You ready to do this thing? I don't know. Have a little extra money to throw towards a Valentine's Day date tonight? All right. Seems like we're all in the mood. Who's ready to make like Marvin Gaye and get it on? I'm, I'm talking about our game faces, of course. It's time for Display Trivia. Oh, yeah. Question one. Which of the following shapes is most closely associated with Valentine's Day? Heart, cube, spiral. Which of the following shapes is most closely associated with Valentine's Day? Heart, cube, spiral. Love comes in all shapes, but only one of these shapes helps you spread the most love. But you know, love is not a one size fits all. Maybe a different shape works better for how you express your love. Personally, I identify with spiral because once I send that angry text to my boyfriend and he leaves me on red, oh man, I am in full on spiral mode. I am basically riding the romantic tilt-a-whirl. Quick word to the wise, think before you text. Sure, you'll kiss and make up later, but another good shape in love is the line. Stay in it, you hear? A heart is love's favorite shape, and 98% of you are moving on to question two. In the online dating app Tinder, to match with someone, a user swipes in which direction? Left, right, down. In the online dating app Tinder, to match with someone, a user swipes in which direction? Left, right, down. The swiping can become exhausting. Beware of swipe fatigue. But if I had to choose between dating app swiping or swipe or no swiping, oh, I always pick the apps. What's Swiper's deal anyway? We know he loves to swipe, but why? Like maybe if we got to the root cause of his swiping, we could help him get the help he needs to prevent it in the future. Swiper, why swiping? Is it because of the insecure attachment style you had with your father? To like someone on Tinder and hopefully spark a match, you swipe to the right. Hopefully you got it right. 93% of you did. Question three. 
Cupid carries all of the following items except bow, arrow, slingshot. Cupid carries all of the following items except bow, arrow, slingshot. Cupid's known for carrying all of these things. But you know what Cupid doesn't get credit for carrying? Valentine's mythology on his back. Yes, I'm looking at you, St. Valentine. We named this whole day after you, and yet scholars still are unsure how much you really had to do with the holiday, or even if you were one person. Seems like for a guy whose whole deal was love you, got quite a few commitment issues. So who were you, Val? The guy performing secret Christian weddings or the one who got decapitated by Roman authorities? I know, yikes. Love, it can make you lose your head. The point is, no one really knows who St. Valentine was, but we do know Cupid was borrowed from Roman and Greek mythology, and he assisted in helping couples fall in love by shooting them with arrows using his bow. Did you get it? 93% of you got a bullseye. Question four. The rose color associated with friendship can also be commonly found on what American road sign? Stop sign, yield sign, speed limit. The rose color associated with friendship can also be commonly found on what American road sign? Stop sign, yield sign, speed limit. When starting off a relationship, it is very, very important to notice the signs, particularly the warning signs. Some warning signs are small, while some are a little bigger. Some, though, will stop you dead in your tracks. Here's the biggest one. You have plans with a guy, right? You're on your way to the date, and he stops responding, just ghosts you, cuts out completely. Then, the next day, he texts you saying, hey, LOL, sorry, I fell asleep. Really, dude? You're gonna blow me off and then lie about it? Okay, so one time I dated a narcoleptic who I think actually might have been telling the truth here, but the point is, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. Same goes with friendship. And to celebrate your friends, you're supposed to send them a yellow rose, the same color as yield signs here in the States. 50% of you got that. Question five. The Italian city where Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is set honors Valentine's Day with a four-day celebration, Padua, Verona, Naples. This Italian city where Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is set honors Valentine's Day with a four-day celebration, Padua, Verona, Naples. Jeez, four days? And we thought we had it bad enough with one. I'm exhausted after just trying to plan one day. Booking the hotel, planning the flights, coordinating Uber rides, and friends, I am just talking about getting my boyfriend out of the way so I can celebrate my true Valentine, me. But the things we do for love, you know? I mean, trust me, getting him out of the way so I can enjoy not having to share the remote with someone for a night, things don't get any better than this. I just hope he's having fun in Paris alone. Do you think I'll notice that I sent him to the Paris in Las Vegas? It remains to be seen. The town where the star-crossed lover story takes place is Verona, and as a town with a rich history of love, it knows it's gotta go all out on V-Day. 90% of you got that, we're halfway there. Question six. Select the actor who has starred in the highest grossing rom-com of all time. Eva Longoria, Helen Hunt, John Corbett. Select the actor who has starred in the highest grossing rom-com of all time. Eva Longoria, Helen Hunt, John Corbett. Ah, the rom-com. The movie genre that receives the most flack from movie snobs. Look dude, just because your movie's in black and white and you have to read subtitles to understand what they're saying in French does not make you better than me. My movie has two conventionally attractive hotties who met by chance at a coffee shop and think they hate each other but are gonna find out it's love. Easy to follow and wash down with a mug of hot cocoa? Like, what's not to like? An anti-hero protagonist? Please. I can find a whole slew of those on Bumble. The biggest grossing rom-com of all time was actually produced by Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson starring John Corbett in My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Opa! 76% of you got that. Question seven. In ancient Rome, which pagan festival was celebrated the day after what we presently recognize as Valentine's Day? Vulcanalia, Lupercalia, Saturnalia. In ancient Rome, which pagan festival was celebrated the day after what we presently recognize as Valentine's Day? Vulcanalia, Lupercalia, Saturnalia. So scholars are not 100% certain that Valentine's Day officially replaced this holiday, but they do know that the church in Rome was not a huge fan of this early spring pagan festival. Could it have been the public nudity and fornication with random strangers in streets? Maybe it was the animal sacrifice and the whipping of single women with the hides to promote fertility. Unclear. 
What we do know is this goat head I'm going to wear to my Lupercalia party later really emphasizes my best features. I'll totally get whipped by the townspeople, yay! The dates might just be a coincidence, but one thing is clear. When you have expectations for your Lupercalia, it never goes quite as well as you want it to. Just enjoy the ride. 83% of you got that. Question eight. All of the following chemicals are released when someone is falling in love, except dopamine, norepinephrine, BDNF. All of the following chemicals are released when someone is falling in love, except dopamine, norepinephrine, BDNF. It's crazy to think that falling in love is just a series of chemical processes taking place in the brain. It really brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, we have chemistry. You know, I wondered why people use that terminology and not something like, oh, we have great trigonometry together. Wow, our computer science is really fiery. In a way, it makes science like kind of hot. No, really, like that Bunsen burner set your lab coat sleeve on fire. Oh, good thing you were wearing your protective goggles. Whew. Okay. When falling in love, the brain releases dopamine and norepinephrine to help you feel cuddly and bubbly and intimate, but BDNF is released during exercise, which is objectively the opposite of love. 83% of you got that, or maybe you just tuned into the pre-show where I gave you the answer. Question nine. This popular Valentine's confection, first released in 1866, contains all of the following ingredients except gelatin, maltodextrin, tragicanth. This popular Valentine's confection, first released in 1866, contains all of the following ingredients except gelatin, maltodextrin, tragicanth. Confection is really a loose term for what this is. A Danish? Now that's a confection. Tiramisu? Arguably a grade A confection. But this candy, notice my use of air quotes, was originally intended to be used as a lozenge. Yeah, you heard that correctly. This was invented so that annoying people on the street didn't have to clear their throat before speaking to you. They could just die right in. Lovely weather we're having today. Shut up! And then to make this product more unpalatable, marketers put cute little phrases on the faces of these candies and called them conversation hearts. That's right, everyone's favorite unsolicited chalk flavored DMs. The only thing they don't contain is maltodextrin. 66% of you got that kind of savage. It's time for the final question. Question 10. The first historical figure to officially recognize the Feast of St. Valentine was alive during the lifespan of all of the following ancient empires except Gupta Olmec Tang Dynasty. The first historical figure to officially recognize the Feast of St. Valentine was alive during the lifespan of all of the following ancient empires except Gupta Olmec Tang Dynasty. As you all know, we now call the holiday Valentine's Day, but personally, I think the Feast of St. Valentine sounds a lot more exciting. I mean, we have a day every day. Monday, Tuesday, I'm refusing to work today. But it's not every day you are treated to a full-on feast. And isn't that the point of a holiday? To do something special? To step outside the norm? Right, I know, I make every single meal I eat into three courses, but that doesn't mean I can't make it special by at least putting up some decorations or, oh, I don't know, eating at the table instead of my bed or, oh, I don't know, using a napkin to wipe this buffalo chicken sauce off my face and not my bed sheets. What I'm saying is, even if you don't have a valentine, be your own valentine. Make today worth celebrating. And you have Pope Jealousius alive during the 5th century common era to thank for this day to commemorate love. Dory, the Tang Dynasty. 74% of you got that. How are you feeling? Did you win? Shout it out in the chat. Even if you didn't win, there is a whole lot to love. A whole lot to love because you came, you slayed, you displayed your knowledge, and you got paid. Keep a lookout for those winnings. And in the meantime, treat yourself. No matter what kind of love you're celebrating today, do it in style. Do it in style. Genus up. How did you do? Parmas 0381. Tell me, tell me. Do we have any Valentine's Day winners? 212. Shout yourselves out, friends. You know, if you need a little extra hand in these, I do a pre-show every single weekday, 30 minutes before trivia at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I give you an answer. You get to learn about the app and how you can earn money. Facts Guru, that's what I'm talking about. 10 out of 10. Anybody else get some money that they can go now buy themselves some candy hearts with, some conversation hearts? Silex. 
Just got a six out of 10, Ash one. Bravo, friends. Oh, four out of 10, Tim Dozer, that's okay. Maybe love isn't your specialty. It's certainly not mine. B Display got a five out of 10. Marcus Coleman got a six. Thank you, Hugsy, I appreciate that. A very happy Valentine's Day to all of you. You truly are my Valentine's and you make every day really special for me. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Welcome back to New York. Welcome back to Display TV live from New York City. I'll see you friends tomorrow for the pre-show at 7.30 and back for trivia at eight on Display.